All right, as I mentioned earlier at the beginning of the uh, semester, uh, we're going to be building an application together right, that's uh, spread over uh, several assignments. Right? I believe it's six assignments. Uh, and, uh, uh, and the application is built, it's uh, broken up into uh, a couple of parts, right? in particular two. One of them uh, is the, um, uh, well, first of all, we're building a, as we mentioned earlier, a course management, uh, an online course management application. Okay? And uh, there are two uh, primary uh, types of users, two, two types of audiences that we're targeting. The faculty will we'll be able to uh, create uh, different courses, um, and uh, the courses will be broken up into multiple modules, uh, into the, the multiple lessons, uh, topics, and be able to add multiple widgets. Uh, for, for, um, uh, to add videos and, and um, HTML content, um, links to, uh, to uh, Google Docs or slides and whatnot. You know, so it would be the application that a faculty would use to author a, uh, an online course. Okay? So that's the first, the first big part of our application. Right? So we're going to spend about three weeks on that part. Right? We're going to build that using React. Right? The front end is going to be built uh, using React. The back end is going to be the same back end we've been using so far. Right? It's going to be a Java uh, with a MySQL database. Right? So after those first three weeks, we're going to switch over and work on the, on the, um, on the other side of the, uh, of, the, of the application, the student side, you know, from the student's point of view. Right? And, and uh, so we're going to spend another three weeks uh, working on that part. Right, where, the, where a student is going to be able to consume a, 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 um, a course. Right? They're going to be able to look at a course, enroll in a course, right? look at the, the, the course, the modules, uh, the topics, the lessons, uh, look at the slides, uh, assignments, and whatnot, maybe submit, submit a, a quiz. Right? So, so we're going to spend uh, three weeks there, and we're going to build that with the Angular. Uh, on, uh, an, with Angular okay? uh, for the front end, we're going to use Angular. Uh, for the back end, we're going to switch over from, from using uh, Java Instead, we're going to be using Node.js for the server. Uh, and instead of using MySQL as a database, we'll use MongoDB. Right? Uh, so those last three weeks, we'll have a chance to uh, talk about a, um, an another popular uh, framework, uh, well, sort of a framework, uh, the mean stack framework, right? where you have M uh, for Mongo as a database, uh, E for Express, that's the middle tier uh, service layer, uh, then um, uh, A for, uh, for Angular, and then N for Node.js. Node Right, so it's a it's a well known uh, stack uh, or or, or, or uh, that, that that works very well together. All right, so that we'll do that the last three weeks. Right, so first this this next couple of weeks we'll be working on the faculty side, right, and the next the other three weeks we'll be working on the student side. Make sense? It's a nice split uh, in between those two. Make sense? All right. So this assignment, the second assignment, is the first uh, of the next couple assignments. All right. Uh, so there'll, there'll be a total of six assignments. This one uh, will get us started with the faculty part, uh, where the faculty can uh, start working and, and, and adding courses, adding modules to the course, lessons and whatnot. And so we'll, we'll do that for the next three weeks. Right? Uh, so, so that'll be assignment two, three, and four. Uh, and then we'll switch over to Angular, and where we'll have assignments five, six, and we'll probably get to seven. Uh, let's see. Let's see if we get to seven. Usually that last one sometimes we don't have we don't have a time to finish that off. Okay, depending on how how we uh, end up uh, with time at, at towards the end. Okay, um, all right. So let's look at this first assignment. Uh, so this first assignment uh, assumes that you've completed the previous one. Yeah, so the login part of this, right, the login part of the application, right, was built using jQuery and the uh, and the Java server and the MySQL database. Right. So this assumes that you've already done that. Right. That you can log in. Uh, and uh, you, can, you can change the, uh, the role as a faculty or as a student. Uh, so assuming that you have that, right, this one is the first of, the, of three, right, of, uh, of the next three assignments. So this one uh, asks you to allow a faculty to be able to create a course, right, create a brand new course. Uh, the course uh, can, will have a title, uh, will have a number of seats available, uh, you know, the starting date and whatnot, right, so it'll have uh, some, some features some attributes about a course, and you'll be able to create maybe a list of courses, right? And so we'll see that uh, how to do that, be able to remove a course, edit a course. Uh, so the 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 very the very a lot of metadata uh, for for courses. A course is going to be made up of multiple modules, right? Just like my course, right? My course here is made up of multiple modules: module one, two, three, four, right, all the way to module six, right? And each module will have a certain number of lessons 
uh, for them, uh, associated. So a course is made up of multiple lessons. I'm sorry, a course is made up of multiple modules, a module is made up of multiple lessons, and a lesson is made up of multiple topics. So there's going to be lots of one-to-many relationships. One course has many modules, one module has many, uh, sorry, course modules, lessons, and topics. Uh, here in class, uh, I will almost com complete uh, the first two of these. Right? We'll, we'll work on courses here in class. Right? And so I'll show you how to create courses, delete courses, edit courses, um, and we'll get started on the modules part. Okay? Uh, so we'll, I'll show you how to create a one-to-many relationship, right, where something is made up of multiple things, right, and that is made up of multiple other things. Right? So we'll, we'll see how to create these mappings of have one-to-many relationships. Yes? Once, once I've shown you how to, how to do uh, one of these, then building a lesson is, is verbatim or almost the same as, as create. So the relationship between lessons and modules is almost the same as modules to courses. Right? So notice that, the, that the, uh, 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 the value of each one increases uh, since uh, the first two I'm almost going to complete here in class for you. Uh, but then the bulk will be for you to do this in, uh, on your own following what we did in class. Okay? Uh, okay. The let's see what else. Uh, topics is uh, is going to be uh, optional for undergrads. So I need to change this a little bit. It'll be optional for undergrads, uh, but it'll be um, required for graduate students. Okay. Um, so I, I, I need to change the this, the scoring here a little bit. Uh, so topics is the uh, is the, the the last piece, right? The last piece that will, that will contain uh, the actual content. So this really doesn't contain any content, uh, no videos, no slides yet. That will be the, the next assignment. In the next assignment, once we have a topic, right, we'll be able to add widgets to the topic, right? add a video widget, uh, add um, a slides widgets. A, a si well, no, assignments will do that next. Um, uh, 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 let's see, slides. Uh, links to other documents like Google Docs and things like that, right? So there will be several widgets that you can add to a topic, right? So we'll do that in the next assignment. Right, so for this one, uh, we'll create the um, uh, these uh, these uh, courses, modules, lessons, and topics. Um, all right. So so this is this is the uh, a wireframe of what it might look like, right? If you view if you took a, if you've taken a look at uh, Google Docs, this is where I got it from, okay? Uh, so I, I just copied there. It's course manager, and uh, you can. There's a plus sign on the right hand side. You can ask. You know, type in the, the, the title of the course. Uh, you say plus, and it adds it uh, as a list. Okay. Uh, the um, uh, notice that it's broken up into yesterday, previous seven days. Uh, that's a bonus. You know, so you don't have to break it up like that. Right. It, this just will be just a list of courses. Right. Uh, also on the right hand side, notice that there's a an X that allows you to remove. Uh, the course, okay, and, and just this is just basically a, a, a tabular um, uh, a tabular view of the list of courses uh, with several columns. Where the first column is the uh, the title of the course, then who owns it, you know, meaning who created it, the faculty who created it, uh, you know, when was it last modified. Uh, also notice that there's a grid grid view, right? So if you click on that on that uh, icon, it would switch it uh, to a grid view. Right, which displays as, as boxes uh, from, top to, uh, from top to bottom, from left to right. Uh, I, I don't know if I have a, do I have one? Yeah, I don't, I don't have a, a grid view. But it would look something uh, like this, right? So a grid view uh, or, yeah, Google Slides. So these are slides, right? So this would be the grid view uh, for, uh, for uh, uh, the courses, right? So if you click on that icon, it would toggle between a list view or a grid view. Make sense? OK. Uh, here in class, we'll do maybe one of them, and then I'll let you uh, on your, do the other one on your own. All right, so, so there's uh, several pieces to this. Uh, the first one is uh, creating the, um, the, course, uh, the courses themselves. Okay? And the courses uh, is split into two pieces. Half of, it, half of the points it will be for implementing the front end. And half of the points will be implementing the back end, right? So the front end uh, will be uh, implemented in uh, in React. So ten points. Uh, this asks you to implement. Um, let's see, implement this wireframe. Um, 
uh, create a, uh, a, a React component that lists the, uh, the, the courses. Uh, inside of that component, you'll have different event handlers, uh, such as being able to create a course, uh, delete a course, uh, let's see, um, then, then also render it as a, as a template using an HTML template that renders them as a list. Uh, also, a couple of components. Uh, each one of these, so this whole thing will be a one big component called the course list component, right, which contains the array of all the components that it's going to render. As it iterates, right, it's going to render uh, several rows. Right? So, that, so each one of those rows themselves is going to be a different component. Right? So it's going to iterate. There's going to be an, an outer component called course list. As it iterates, Right, it's going to render a course row, uh, um, or, or you can also call it a course course list uh, item. Right? You, you can change the names a little bit. Um, so yeah, so big component outside called the course list, and then several subcomponents that render each one of the each one of these. Right? So so four points for the outer one and two points for the uh, for the course row. Um, uh, the course editor will be the um, will be this up here, right? That allows you to uh, type the title, and then click on a plus that, uh, that uh, um, uh, adds a new course to the array of courses. Uh, what else? Let's see. Uh, course editor. Uh, then a, uh, a service client. This will be the, the, uh, the class that talks to the, data, to the server, right? the one we, we worked on yesterday, remember? And that we grabbed all the HTTP requests, right? and we put it in a single class. Remember that? Right? So we're going to do something similar here. Right, any data access to the server, uh, we're going to put it in one single uh, course service client. Right? And it's going to be called the course service client under a services directory. And in there, you're going to have functions such as create course, uh, delete course, find all courses. And it's going to be mapped to a URL that the server is going to be listening at, at slash API slash course. Right? So if you post to API course, you'll create a brand new course. If you uh, do a get on API course, you'll be retrieving all the courses, and they're listed right here. Right? If you post to API course, you'll be uh, generating a new course. If you delete and you provide the ID of the course at the end, then you'll be removing that particular course. Uh, if you say find all courses, it will be a get API course. Uh, find a particular course by ID, uh, or you can update a course that already exists. Oh. Uh, then that means this needs an ID. Uh, some of them have points, some of them don't, right, but they're still required. A course may, uh, all right, so that's the client side. That's the client side. Right? Uh, on the server side, there'll be 10 points again, so you'll, you'll have to uh, create a class right, where you can keep track of all the fields for a particular course, and it'll have, just have the title. It'll have a, an, a unique identifier. It'll have the data that was created and also the date that was modified. Right? Obviously, with the setters and getters, with the constructors, right? Uh, that's 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 uh, that's uh, implied. Uh, you'll also need a repository, right? Just like we did for users, you need a repository that to, that allows you to create, update, remove, uh, delete these courses, right? Uh, so that's easy, right? That's just uh, one or two lines of code. Um, then you need a service, a service that will listen to all these incoming requests, right? Uh, so you you create a um, a REST controller, right? And uh, and you create a, a, you know a, an, an at get mapping, post mapping, put mapping, delete mapping, right? That will listen to all these URLs, right? You'll need a you'll need one of those, a a, a course a web service, uh, under a web dev uh, services course course service. So that's that's the uh, that's the course, right? And we'll probably complete all of this in class, right? So you you we'll, we'll, you you probably just be able to just copy and paste all of this and get it running on your on your side, all right? Uh, once we've done that, we're going to get started on the module, right? Working on the module. Uh, uh, so the module is a uh, is going to uh, pop up when whenever you want to edit a particular course, right? So adding a you know creating a course doesn't actually add any content. Right? It just creates the course as a placeholder. Right? But if you want to edit it, you, you would click on Edit, and you go to the course editor. The course editor is going to contain, um, it, it looks something like this. 
right, where you have on the left hand side a list of modules, a list of modules uh, that, that uh, you can type on the, at the bottom the, the, the title of a module and you click on plus. If you click on plus, it just adds a new module. Add module, 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 module down. You know, just like if you, you can create a course, 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 or course as a list, right? Uh, if, you, if you go into the editor, you can add multiple modules for that particular course. If you go to a different course, you have a different set of modules. So each course has its own set of modules. Make sense? All right, so same thing here. You, you type in the title, you click on plus, and it adds a new, a new module. Or if you click on X, right, it allows you to remove that particular module. Make sense? All right. So this is exactly the same thing, the same code that you did in course for courses, almost identical. The only difference, the only challenge is that the relationship of these modules with the parent course. That's the only challenge here. How do you, how do you now relate uh, and, and, and keep track that these modules belong to this particular course? That if I go to a different mod, uh, course, I have a different set of modules. Like, how do we do that? That's the only difference here. Everything else, you know, creating a new module, editing a module, removing a module, getting a list of all the modules, that's easy. Right? We did that in courses, right? Uh, the, the, but the part of, of, uh, of relating modules to the parent course, that's, that's the challenge. Uh, so anyway, uh, just like we had course list, there will be a module list. Module list just lists all the modules for that particular course. Okay, uh, and you'll have a, a, a just like there was a course service client, there will be a module service client, right? That will allow you to create a module, delete a module, find all modules. Okay, right? Update, up, uh, oops, this is update module. Uh, and so the only one that is, that is a little bit uh, uh, challenging is this one right here. This one's the one that's a little bit challenging. Find all modules for course, right? Because these modules don't exist uh, in, uh, uh, on their own, right? They don't exist on their own. A module needs to exist inside of a course, yes? Right, so, so we need to keep track of that relationship. Right, so how do we do that? Uh, so that's what we're going to learn uh, in this class, right? In the in this this next uh, week or so, All right? So create a module. Uh, so so notice that um, uh, the URLs are going to encode the fact uh, that these modules live inside of a course, right? When we when we were creating courses uh, modules uh, up here, where are they? We were creating a course and we were passing just you know, an object that represented a course. That's easy, right? This, that's the same thing we were doing for users, right? We would post a user. That's easy, right? Um, or, or if we were retrieving all the users, we would just do a get and then you know, slash API slash users. That's easy, right? Uh, but uh, keep, keeping track of the relationship of courses and modules, that's, that's becoming a little more challenging. So we need to capture that. When we, when we encode our, our interaction with the server. For instance, when we create a module, we can't just create a module uh, by itself, right? It needs to be within the context of a particular course, right? right? Because modules don't exist on their own, right? They exist inside of a course. Make sense? Right, so that, we need to capture that somehow. We need to tell the server somehow. Well, we're going to do that uh, using uh, in the URL, we're going we're gonna to capture that relationship. We're going to say, you're going to create, we're going to post, right? That we, it needs to be a post, right? Uh, what are we creating? We're creating a module, but it's not, it, but it's, it's, it's not on its own. It's inside the context of a course. See that? So the relationship is, in, is, is encoded in the URL. We're saying we're creating a new module, but for this particular course. Make sense? Okay. So this is keeping in, in, uh, in line with what we refer to as a RESTful service. Right? RESTful services uh, um, uh, uh, stipulate that these URLs are not, are not arbitrary, right? that, uh, that these URLs have a particular syntax right? that uh, capture the fact that uh, this is the, the thing, the entity, the data, the data entity that we are creating. And it also captures the fact of that there is a relationship with another entity, right? Whose ID? That's the ID, 
right? So we're creating a brand new module for a parent course. Uh, then deleting a module. Uh, deleting a module probably, uh, uh, we have two choices here. We have two choices. We could, we could do a delete, right, delete just like this, and then do a, uh, do a delete, and then the, an a, uh, the URL would be API, course ID, module, and then module ID. We could certainly do that, all right? But um, since each module, uh, 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 at once it's created, one, once it has been created and inserting in a database, you know, it has a unique identifier, right? If you know the unique identifier, you can manipulate it regardless of who, uh, what, what context it's in, right? You don't really need to know that it belongs to a particular course, yes? All right, so, so here we are being a little, a little um, uh, laxed, right? And we are deleting the module just with the unique identifier, right? Regardless of the fact that that module lives under a particular course. Okay, this would be a little more kosher, right? Slash API, course, course ID, module, module ID. But here, really, I don't really need this ID for the course because I know the module you're, that you're removing, right? I'm not even going to do anything with that ID. I'm going to ignore it. Make sense? I don't really need it because the unique identifier is enough for me to uniquely find that row and remove it. You see that? Make sense? All right. Um, all right. Well, let's see. Find all modules. Same thing. Here, find all modules just retrieves every single module across all courses. Right? Uh, does that make sense? Is that a use case that might be a, a, a useful use case? Maybe not. You know, who would want to list all, all, the, all the modules across all courses? Maybe that's a use case that uh, might, might make no sense, right? But it's, a, it's an interesting academic um, uh, exercise. Uh, here's another one, find module by ID, right? If you know the ID of the module that you want, you can just give me that module and I'll fetch it for you. How about this one, find all modules but for a particular course? Well, now I need to, I need to make sure that I, 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 I encode that relationship in the URL, right? It says, you know, here's the course, and I want the modules under that course. You see that? Right? And so the URL is capturing that relationship. I want all the modules, not all of them, like this one, right? This one says, give me all the modules. You see that? This one is not, is not all the modules. It's the ones that are under the course whose course ID is CID. See that? So this one only returns the course, uh, the modules under that course, and update just just with uh, module ID. Make sense? All right. So you, you'll create the service layer for that. Uh, so that's the client side. On the server side, uh, you'll create the uh, the entity to map this to a database. Uh, the ID, the title, that's the same as before, right? There's nothing new there. The only thing here that become that is, is, uh, is somewhat challenging is the fact uh, that this module is within the context of a course, right? There, there is a one-to-many relationship, right? In database terms, in database you have something like this, right? You have the course, and there's a one-to-many with a module, right? There's a one-to-many, right? You have one course has many modules. If you give me the course, I'll tell you which modules belong to that course. Yes? Right? And uh, in, a, in, a, in a database, typically you would capture this uh, by providing here a foreign key right, that refers to a primary key right, on, the, uh, on the other side. That's how you typically uh, encode it in the, uh, in the in relational database. Okay? Uh, here, but, but we are not doing SQL, right? We're not touching SQL at all. Right. Instead, we are using the high-level library, JPA. JPA can do this for us. In JPA, uh, what we're going to do is that uh, we do want a foreign key. Right? We do want a foreign key that references my parent. So there's a, there's a parent-child relationship between these two. Right? Give me the parent, I'll tell you all the, all the children. Okay? So there's a foreign key going back to the primary key. Uh, so to capture that in JPA, uh, we use the following annotation. The annotation is at many to one, meaning this module is participating in a one-to-many relationship, and it's on the many side. 
right? This, this module is on the many side of a one-to-many relationship. And indeed, that's what it is, right? The module is on the many side of a one-to-many relationship. Okay? So that's what we annotate. Uh, and, uh, and, and this says, and, and what is it referencing? What is it referencing? It's pointing back to a course. See that? Right? The foreign key is referring to a course. And that's what we, we're capturing here. It's a private course uh, ID. Okay. Um, so that, that's that's for the uh, that, that's for the module side. On the on the course side, we're going to have to modify it a little bit. We're going to have to say that the course that the course is on the one side, right, of a one-to-many relationship. Yes. So this was on the many side, and this is on the one side. Uh, so we annotate it by saying that we are on the one to many. You know, notice that the other one is many to one. This is on the one to many. Okay, uh, and uh, and and so uh, and we have a one to many relationship, meaning one course has many modules, meaning a list of modules or an array of modules, but one module has one course. Right, so we capture it in JPA in Java. We would capture it as a list of modules. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we also we also uh, capture saying well how are these pointing to each other, right? So here we're saying that uh, it's pointing to me, meaning the module is pointing to me using a uh, an attribute called course, right? And so we we capture that in the in the mapped by attribute of the entity of the uh, annotation, right? Uh, one more thing is that we have a an at JSON ignore. Okay, All right, this is very very important uh, because uh, when we when the client when the browser asks the server right they ask the server uh, for a course so hey give me a course so it says okay go fetch the course you know slash API slash course slash and then the, and then the idea of a course uh, the server is going to say ah oh, okay I, I got the course. Oh, and by the way, this course has all these modules. Do you want the modules too? All right. So it's all sure. Give me the mod. Give me the modules as well. All right. So this is going to return as an array, as a as a course, as an object, a JSON object, uh, with a with that represents the course. It'll have a title of the course. You know the 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 date that it was created. You know date that it was created. Okay. Uh, the the modules. As an array, right, because it's a list of modules, so it'll be an array, and here are the the objects that represents each module. Each module will have a title, right? We'll have a whole bunch of things. Oh, and by the way, it has what? It has a course in here, doesn't it? But this course is where? It's the same course as up here, so we have a circular. Right, we have a circular reference. Okay, uh, what 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 the JSON is going to try and do when it's mapping this is going to try and grab this and put it under here. And when it gets under there, it'll try it again. So it'll become an infinite recursive uh, self-reference. Okay, uh, so so that's why here this JSON ignore. It says stop. Don't put this in there. Right? Do not do not enter here. Right, don't try to convert that, right? Because you're you're going to enter an infinite loop, you know, trying to try to uh, uh, map that into into a JSON. Okay, all right. Um, all right, and your server. If you don't put that, your server will crash. All right, trying to infinite infinitely generate this infinite JSON right, that goes on forever and ever and ever. Um, all right. Uh, let's see. You will need a repository. Uh, we'll need the services. Uh, excellent. Uh, lessons will be identical uh, to modules. So module is to courses as lessons are to modules. Yes? So the course has many modules, but each module has many lessons. And each lesson has many topics. Okay? Uh, so lessons, uh, it's basically this wireframe over here. These are the lessons at the top. 
Okay? You have the lessons at the top. So the, the, the modules are uh, a, a sidebar right, of lists of items. The, the lessons are tabs. Right? So if you click a different tab, if you click on a different tab, you get different stuff down below. Right? And as you, as, you, uh, um, as you select different uh, lessons, you get different topics down below. Right, so these are pills, like buttons, right? almost like tabs, behave just like tabs. Right? So that when you click on different topics, you get different content. Okay? Uh, let's see, so for, for lessons, uh, we, give you, we give you the, um, the URLs. So you can create a lesson. You can create a lesson. And the URL is, uh, is a for a given course, for a given module, I can create a brand new uh, lesson. You can retrieve a particular lesson. You can retrieve all the lessons. Uh, you can, I'm sorry, you can delete a lesson. You can, you can retrieve one single lesson. Uh, you can find all the lessons for a given module. Uh, or you can modify an existing lesson. Okay? All right, let's see. Uh, deliverables. Oh, here, here's the, here's the grid. Here's the grid. All right, any questions on that, on that assignment? Yes. Uh, you, you, could, you could choose, uh, so the, the wireframes that I'm proposing here are, are only proposals, right? So if you, if you have a, um, you know, a, uh, if you have a better way of, of representing that, that's fine. The, f the features has to have to be there, right? The layout doesn't have to be exactly what I have here. The styling can be your own, right? But the features uh, have to be there, right? The, the use cases have to be there, right? The same, the same feature set, okay? Yeah, I wouldn't expect to, to see, you know, 60 identical uh, solutions. I, I, I would hope that they're, they look fairly different, right? All right, anything else? Make sense? All right.